ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله تسألون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم وما يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الحدي حدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محثثاتها وكل محثثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار ثم أما بعد عيشة رضي الله تعالى عنها she said the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said whoever introduces into the affair of ours that which does not belong to it will have it rejected again concerning the affair of bid'ah again concerning introducing something new concerning worship into the deen into Islam, into the worship of Allah. Ascribing it to Islam when there is no evidence for it from Quran or the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And verily it will be rejected. Again, the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he would give his sermons, he would mention. Thumma amma ba'd to proceed. Indeed, the best speech is the book of Allah. The best of guidance is that of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the worst of affairs are the newly invented matters. Every newly invented matter is an innovation. And every innovation is misguidance. And every instance of misguidance is in the fire. Also, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever innovates or accommodates an innovator, then upon him is the curse of Allah, his angels, and the whole of mankind. Again, time and time again, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he warned and he spoke out against Bidah. And it was not present in his time, showing the evil concerning Bidah, and also showing the evil of sitting with the people upon misguidance. Just to highlight one type of bidah, and this is concerning specifying a day of fasting in order to prove a point. You have the hunger strike, the starving of oneself to prove a point. Example, fasting a day showing solidarity for the people of Palestine. Example, I will not eat until I am released from prison. The likes of these things are from Beda. Verily, abstaining from food and drink 
Fasting is an act of worship and it is to be done sincerely for Allah, seeking the face of Allah. It is to be done in accordance to the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, <coughs> Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah mentions, fasting is for me and I shall reward it. Hereby making this act an act of worship. And we should keep away from food and drink to please Allah. So this thing where they have now, we are fasting a particular day, showing solidarity, showing togetherness, showing the, the togetherness of the Muslims. We want to fast together, all of us on this particular day, showing solidarity for the Palestinian people. Nothing of this sort was done in the time of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam never fasted together with the companions for anything other than Allah. And it was done upon the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So we don't fast because some people are in pain. We do not fast because some Muslims are going through hardship. We do not fast just because someone says, let us all fast together. La. We do not withhold from food and drink as an act of rebellion. So now that the, the, the prison officers or the warden or the politicians could intervene and show us some mercy. I am not eating or drinking. I am on a hunger strike. I am staying away from food and drink until I am released from the prison. Again, this is bidah. This is from evil. There is a firm principle. Firm Ahmad. There is a firm principle from Islam, from the Sunnah, from the Salaf, prohibiting sitting with the people of innovation. And again, innovation is from evil. The, the, the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he forbade innovation to the utmost. The companions of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Salaf, they spoke out against innovation. They had hate for innovation in their hearts. And they also raised their swords against innovation and the people upon innovation. Ibn Abbas, again from the major companions of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, indeed, the most detestable of things to Allah are the innovations. Ibn Umar, the son of Umar ibn al-Khattab, Abdullah ibn Umar, radiallahu ta'ala anhum, he said, every innovation is misguidance even if the people see it as something good. Sufyan Athari, he said, innovation is more beloved to Iblis, to the devil. Innovation is more beloved to Shaitan than sin. Since a sin may be repented from, but innovation is not repented from. Again, this affair of holding firm to the sunnah and staying away from innovation is as the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, that very a time will come whereby holding on to the sunnah, being upon the sunnah, practicing the sunnah will be like holding on to hot coals. It will be a test. It will be a trial for the disbelievers. Again, there is a firm principle from Islam, from the Sunnah, from the Salaf as -Saleh. 
where it pertains to prohibiting sitting with the people of Beda. Allah mentions, and it has already been revealed to you in the book, Al-Quran, that when you hear the verses of Allah being denied and being mocked at, then sit not with them until they engage in a talk other than that. But if you stayed with them, certainly in that case, you would be like them. Surely, Allah will collect the hypocrites and the disbelievers all together in hell. The first part Allah mentions that it has already been revealed in the book of Quran that when you hear the ayat of Allah, the verses of Allah being denied and mocked at, then sit not with them until they engage in a talk other than that. Certainly in that case you would be like them if you stayed with them. This year refers to the people of innovation. But don't take it from me, take it from the Salaf. Because Abdullah bin Abbas, again from the major companions of the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Tawjuman al-Qur'an, as the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made dua for him to be from the interpreters of Al-Qur'an. He mentioned, do not sit with the people of desires, the people of innovation, the people of deviation and misguidance. For indeed their gatherings cause sickness of the hearts. The son of the used to refer to the people of innovation, Ahlul Beda. Also used to refer to them as Ahlul Ahwa, the people of desires, the people of misguidance, the people of destruction. And they mentioned, do not sit with them. And here he gave the interpretation of this verse, do not sit with the people of desires. Do not sit with the people of innovation. They cause a sickness in the hearts. Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, as we may know, the four Imams of the Sunnah, Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Ashafi, Imam, Imam Al Malik, Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal. He said, from the foundations of the Sunnah with us is to abandon argumentation and settle with the people of desires. Ahlul Ahwa. Al Alama, <coughs> Sheikh Ahmad al Najmi, one of the, the major scholars of our time, and he died approximately 20 something years ago. He commented and he mentioned the evidence to the same of that of Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal. And remember that this knowledge is inherited, it is passed down. Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, he said from the foundations of the Sunnah with us, meaning, meaning the people of knowledge, is to abandon argumentation and settle with the people of desires. And Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, he died around 110 after the Hijrah. We are in the time of 1433 or 34 after the Hijrah. And Sheikh Ahmad and Najmi, one of the inheritors of that knowledge, he mentioned the evidence for the sin is the saying of Allah the Most High. And it has already been revealed to you in the book, Al-Quran, that when you hear the verses of Allah being denied and being mocked at, 
then do not sit with them until they turn away to another topic. Otherwise, in that case, you are like them. There are some beautiful narrations from the Salaf concerning abandoning sitting with the people of Beda and showing revilement for sitting with the people of Beda. Again, understand the affair. Allah mentions in his book concerning mocking at his verses and this here is referring to the people of innovation, the people of desires. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam spoke continuously against innovation and being with the people of innovation. Whoever innovates or accommodates an innovator, then the curse of Allah is upon him. And there's angels and the whole of mankind. The son of time and time again, they spoke out against innovation. The reality is that the worst thing besides shirk and hypocrisy is innovation. So pay attention now to some of the narrations of the Salaf concerning innovation and the people of innovation and accompanying the people of innovation. Imam al awzai Rahimahullah, he said, keep yourself patient upon the Sunnah and stop where the people before you stop. Here referring to the Sahaba, the Salaf, wherever they stop, you stop. And speak with what they spoke with. And withhold from, with, from what they withheld from. Meaning, do not go into affairs that they did not go into. And take to the path of your Salaf as -Soleh. For indeed, that which suffice them will suffice you. The great Tabi, Abu Aliya, Rahimahullah, he said, and he died 90 years with the Hijra. Learn Islam. And when you have learned Islam, do not turn away from it. Upon you is to stay upon the straight path, for indeed that is Islam. Do not deviate from it, neither to the right nor to the left. Upon you is the sunnah of your Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and that which the Sahaba were upon. And keep away from these desires which when thrown among the people cause enmity and hatred between them again here referring to innovation calling it desires this is this is what innovation stems from desires why are you fasting that they have solidarity for the palestinians that is due to your desires why do you make that extra prostration after the compulsory solar? That is due to your desires. Why do you shake hands after the fourth solar every time? This is due to the desires. They used to refer to the people of innovation as the people of desires. And they mentioned that these innovations and these desires they cause the splitting amongst the Muslims. Again, sins and innovations cause splitting of the Muslims because the reality is that the Muslim, the believer, he's upon the straight path. He's upon the straight path which Allah revealed. The straight path which the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught his Sahaba. The straight path which the Sahaba fought and laid down their lives for. This is what it means to hold on to the Jamaah, to the straight path. So those who divert and deviate from the straight path, they are upon innovation, they are upon desires, they are upon sins. And this is, these are the people 
who separate from the straight path. They are the ones who are in reality causing division amongst the Muslims. Mubashir ibn Ismail, Rahimahullah, he said, it was said to Imam al awzai there is a man who says, I will sit with Ahlul Sunnah and with Ahlul Bida. Meaning that he will sit with the people of truth, the people of the Sunnah, Ahlul Sunnah, and the people of Bida, Ahlul Bida. He wants to sit and mix with the people, the people of truth and the people of falsehood. So Imam al awzai said, this man wishes to bring together truth and falsehood. You have some people like this. They want to mix with this one. They want to mix with that one. I want to sit with this one and sit with that one. Meaning that they, they, they just want to unify everybody. How? There is truth. There is falsehood. A, a major principle is making the truth distinctly clear from falsehood. And those who want the truth, they will hold on to the truth. And those who want falsehood, they will stay away from the truth and head towards falsehood. But you find some people trying to mix truth and falsehood. This is like mixing poison with honey. The Tabi Muhammad ibn Sirin. He mentioned two men from amongst the people of desires, again referring to the people of innovation, entered upon him. And one of them said, O oh Abu Bakr, we wish to have a word with you. So Muhammad ibn Sirin said, No, I will not speak to you. So they said, then we shall recite to you an ayat, one of the verses of Allah from the book of Allah, Al-Quran. Muhammad ibn Sirin said, no, either you will get up and leave or I will leave. So they both left. And Muhammad ibn Sirin, he was in a gathering of the people and they asked him, O oh, Abu Bakr, what harm would it have done if they recited some ayat from the book of Allah? What harm would it have done if they just recited a verse from the Quran? So he replied, indeed, I fear that they would recite to me an ayat and they would distort it. And then that would settle in my heart, again showing the revilement for the people of innovation, the people of desires. Al-Fudail ibn Iyad, he said, I met the best of people, and he died in 187 Hijra, meaning that he met the earlier Salaf, and he said he met the best of people, all of them people of the Sunnah, and they used to forbid from accompanying the people of innovation. Al Hassan al Basri, and he died 110 Hijra. He said, Do not sit with the people of innovation and desires, nor argue with them, nor listen to them. Ibrahim, he said, Whoever honors an innovator, has aided in the destruction of Islam. Sufyan authority again. He said, whoever listens to an innovator has left the protection of Allah and is entrusted with the innovation. Imam al-Malik. How evil are the people of innovation? We do not give them salam. And this is an affair here that when Sheikh Ibn Baz and he died 20 something years ago before the World Trade Center bombing. He mentioned and he advised the people, and he was the mufti of Saudi Arabia at the time. 
And he mentioned the courage from them, Osama bin Laden and his people. He mentioned, do not give them salam. Because verily they are the people of innovation, the people of desires. And some of the, their innovation takes them outside the fold of, uh, of Islam. But their innovation is deep. That was before the set of bombings. Bombings in Riyadh, bombing the Muslim lands. This is what the people of innovation do. They cause havoc among the Muslims. They cause fitna amongst the Muslims. So the Muslim to shed blood against the Muslim. So he mentioned to the people, do not even give them salam. They are not from your brothers. They are brothers of the devils. La ilaha illallah wa hadahu la sharika lahu. Lahu al-mulku wa lahu al-hamdu wa huwa ala kuli shayin qadir. Bismillah wa alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala Thumma ma bad again There are many 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 narrations There are books Endless books That will fill the walls wall to wall Rooms upon rooms Whereby the salaf Those who inherited this deen this knowledge from the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam concerning innovation and the people of innovation, the people of desires. Again, Imam Malik, he said, how oh, evil are the people of innovation, we do not give them salam. Imam Shafi, he said that a person meets Allah with every sin except shirk. It's better than meeting him upon any one of the innovative beliefs. Understand this. Meeting Allah with every sin, every sin accepting shirk, every sin accepting worshiping besides Allah, and dying upon that, and meeting your Lord upon every sin, Except shirk is better than dying and meeting Allah with one innovated belief. Again, Al Fudel ibn Iyad, he said, Whoever sits with a person of innovation, then beware of him. And whoever sits with a person of innovation has not been given wisdom. I love that there was a fort of iron between me and a person of innovation. That I eat with a Jew and a Christian is more beloved to me than I eat with a person of innovation. Alayth ibn Sa'ad, he said, if I saw a person of desires, a person of innovation walking upon water, I would not, I would not accept from him. So Imam Ashafi heard this. And he said, he alayth has fallen short. He said that if he saw a person of innovation walking upon water, he would not accept from He mentioned that he has fallen short. He said, if I saw him walking in the air, I would not accept from him. al fudayl bin Iyad. He said, if a man comes to a person to consult him, and he directs him to an innovator, then he has made a deception of Islam. Beware of going to a person of innovation, for, it, for they divert people from the truth. Again, this affair, it leaves the wise one to ponder. It leaves the Muslim, the believer, to ponder. How could Muslims, but then the affair is real. The reality is that we have more ignorance than anything. How could Muslims leave a community whereby there is a masjid upon the sunnah, propagating the way of the salaf as and they dress up nice, 
They put on their best clothes. They groom their beard. They perfume themselves. Their wife puts on makeup, puts on a hijab or whatever. And they make their way out of the community that has a Salafi masjid, a masjid upon the Sunnah. They make their way out of that community the head to a community, the head to a masjid upon known innovation. The affair leaves the wise one, the believer, the Muslim to ponder. The reality is that our affair is bad. This is why the people of Palestine are going through what they are going through. This is why we as Muslims from time to time, Allah allows the disbelievers to come upon us. This is why Allah allows certain hardships to afflict us. But again, the affair is also great, Allahu Akbar, because by fitna, Allah purifies the jamaah. Because verily, there, you might see a great number of people. Majority of the people they hear Mufti Meng, if Mufti Meng say he coming here for Juma, and we put out a flyer, Mufti Meng come to give Juma here, the masjid full. Outside pack up. We had to extend the masjid. We had to, we had to ask sisters to, to stay home because they don't have enough room to accommodate the brothers. Such as the affair. And you will find this sort of Fit not taking place, whereby the truth is being propagated. Nah, we don't want that. But we expect to find goodness. We expect to strive as a ummah upon what? The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned that when you delve into ina, a certain type of riba, and you hold on to the tales of cows, and you deal with cultivation, meaning that we, we run down the dunya and you abandon jihad. Allah will send humiliation upon you, leaving off jihad. Remember again a type of jihad that the soul of upon was fighting against innovation, not just fighting against the disbelievers. They didn't just lay down their lives against the disbelievers. Again, as we close off last week, we'll close off again today. Abdullah bin Masood, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, <coughs> concerning the narration we left off with last week, where he went to the masjid and he saw the people making congregational dhikr, saying, subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah. The one worshipping Mother Lashmi, the one worshipping Selassie, the one worshipping Sri Sachin Sai Baba, or some statue, the people were saying, Subhanallah, glory be to Allah. La ilaha illallah, nothing is worthy of worshipping truth except Allah. Alhamdulillah. All praise is due to Allah. They were worshipping Allah alone. But again, they were contending with Muhammadan Abaduhu wa Rasulu. They were worshipping Allah upon the Sunnah. So the, the companions, they came. They came together. Not disunited. Some, some agreeing and some disagreeing. They agreed that what they saw it seemed good, but it was evil. And then he mentioned to them, what is this that I see you doing? And what did they say? These are nothing but small stones with which we are counting, saying, Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illallah. Subhanallah. And he Abdullah bin Masuri mentioned to them, count your sins. Telling them that they need to seek repentance for this 
worship that they are performing. It is not from the sunnah, it is bid'a. Count your sins. Verily, your good deeds will not be lost. O Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, how quick you race to your destruction. As Allah mentioned in Al-Quran, by time, man is in a state of loss. If we are left to our own selves, our own desires, we are heading for destruction. We have to be firm upon la ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. How quick you race to your destruction. Here we are, the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, abundant everywhere. SubhanAllah, the believer would take heed. We would love to be with the companions of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That if we are doing something wrong and they admonish us, that is more beloved to us than us doing something wrong and just traversing upon that, thinking we are upon good. The Sahaba were present admonishing these people, understand the affair of innovation. The Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his clothes has not been worn out, and his utensil that he, that he used to use has not been broken, meaning that the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, recently passed away. I swear by him, in whose hand is my soul. Now he is swearing by Allah because he is firm upon this belief. He is firm upon this iman. He is firm upon this knowledge. Either you, referring to these people, either you are an ummah more rightly guided <coughs> than the, the, the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this here is an insult to an individual. This here, not really an insult, but an, a rebuke. None of us could be more rightly guided than the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his Sahaba. Either you are more rightly guided than the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, referring to the companions, referring to the, the, the companions of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Sahaba. Either you are more rightly guided than them, or you are opening the doors to evil. And this is what innovation does. Again, innovation, it opens the doors to evil. And it causes splitting amongst the Muslim, whereby the Muslims now, they want to turn upon each other and kill each other. Either you are upon a, a guidance better than that of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, or you are opening the doors to evil. They said, answering them, we swear by Allah, O Abu Abdurrahman, we did not intend anything but good. And again here, it is not just to have a good intention. It is not just to mean good. You must have a good intention. You must mean good. But you must also have the sunnah in your hand. In order for any act of worship to be accepted, it must be done with a sincere intention upon the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Again, he is firm upon this knowledge that he is swearing by Allah. And the people here now say that we intend good, man, are sincere. As a good Muslim, I sincere, I mean good. That is for Allah. That is not for us. For us, is what we see of the actions. As Omar ibn al-Khattab mentioned, we judge people upon their actions. In the time of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, revelation used to come down. 
So we would know who the believers are, and we would know who the hypocrites are. We would know who the disbelievers are. But after the death of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, revelation stopped coming down. So we used to judge the people based upon their actions. And then he mentioned, whoever shows us good, we will judge him based upon that. Take heed to this piece of advice here. If you want to take any other piece of advice, take, take heed to this piece of advice here from Umar ibn al-Khattab, the second Khalifa of the Muslims after the death of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa We judge people based upon their actions. So if someone does good, we bring him near. And what he does in secret, Allah will hold him to account for that. So if someone does good, we judge him based upon that. You don't go around it. So what about this one who doing evil? A time I'm advising a brother, hey, you need to stop. So what about this one? And what about that one? He doing wrong and you ain't see it. Come, subhanAllah, how, how, how foolish a big man could be. So what about this one? And what about that one? And you ain't see in the wrong they doing. That is not my affair. I judge a man based upon what he's doing in public. What he's doing in private that is between him and his Lord. And we bring him near based upon that good. And then he mentioned we judge a man based upon his actions. And those who are doing evil, they are doing evil in public. We hold them to account to that. Even if they claim they are sincere. That sincerity, that heart, Allah alone knows their fear. So don't even try, I sincere, I good, I mean, no. Perform actions upon the sunnah. That is what is being judged. That is what we judge each other upon. So when they mention we only mean good, we swear by Allah our intentions are good. He mentioned to them, how many people intend good but never achieve it? Verily, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to us, Indeed, there will be a people who will read Al Quran, but it does not go beyond their throats. There are people who will say, I am a Muslim. You will find some people reciting Al Quran. I am a Muslim, but it does not go beyond their throats, it does not enter into their hearts. And it does not be manifest upon their actions. Last point here. Remember, these are people upon desires, upon innovation. And the Sahaba. They are advising them that what they are doing is wrong. And after all this conversation, they are advising, Abdullah bin Masudi mentioned to them, I do not know, but perhaps you are from these people. These people who recite Al Quran, professing Islam with the tongue. But it does not go beyond the throats. It does not enter into the hearts. It is not manifest upon the sunnah. The actions are not manifest upon the sunnah. And then Amr bin Salama, the other Sahaba who was with him, he mentioned, we saw some of these sitting in the circles fighting on the day of Nahrawal along with the Khawarij. Subhanallah, this is, this is, this is, Subhanallah, these people will be in the depths of the hellfire, fighting against the companions of the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is an affair, brothers, we need to take heed to. 
This is an affair we need to be mindful of. Again, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa said, holding on to the sunnah will be like holding on to hot coals. The brothers in the community, I advise myself and I advise you all to hold firm to the sunnah and do not just deviate because of some whisper of the shaitan. Do not just deviate due to some desire you may have in your heart. Do not just deviate to some shortcoming you might see in your brother. Do not just deviate due to some ignorance you might have. Hold firm to the sunnah. And again, as Imam Idu mentioned, the truth is one straight path. And whoever goes beyond the bounds of the truth, they will end up upon falsehood. So I advise you all to convey to the Muslims who make it their duty to leave the gathering of the Jamaah. To leave the gathering upon the sun and find themselves in other places, the places of innovation, that verily they are welcome. But when the fitna comes, they will be the ones held accountable because they are the ones who are diverting from the straight path. Rabbanatina fit dunya hasana. وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسْنَا وَكِنَا ذَابِ النَّارِ May Allah make us from those who hold firm to the sunnah. And in order for us to hold firm to the sunnah, we have to be upon knowledge. We must be with the company of the people upon the sunnah. And we must be from those who not only strive against the disbelievers, but also against those upon innovation and desires. Subhanaka Allahumma bihamdika. Ashadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayhi.